A quick thank you to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Dark Machine, Try Again 95, Astray the Dreamer, Mezik, Budic Joel, German Chemist, Casper Arnholtz, and Chaos to Must. Thank you very much. Human for Hire, written by Zephy Lendantis. Welcome. He slowly opened his eyes to find himself sitting in a small room. Apart from the chair he was sitting on, a desk and the chair on the opposite side of the desk, occupied by an individual that was either a male with delicate features or a female with rugged features. The room was completely naked. I, um, thank you, he stammered. I have news for you, sir. They are, however, unfortunately mixed. He nodded slowly while his eyes struggled to gather information on where he was. The desk was of a dark and stained wood and had a green felt mat on the surface. There was also an inkwell with a white feather pen in it and a triangular brass sign facing him that read, Administrator. The administrator was wearing a white toga with a loosely fastened with a small copper brooch that resembled a dove's wing. He looked down at himself and realized that he was naked, which, uh, hardly enough, didn't bother him at all. His eyes caught the administrator's news, he heard his voice ask carefully. The administrator offered an apologetic smile. Yes, well, um, it coughed carefully into its fist. You're dead, sir, obviously. Obviously, he felt panic rise in his throat. Oh, the administrator seemed genuinely surprised. Tell me, how much do you remember? It asked as it opened a drawer on its side of the desk. He found the sound of wood against wood, soothing. Um, nothing? He shrugged in a defeated manner. Right, the administrator smiled softly at him. That's unusual, but not unexpected. Let me help fill you in on some of the blanks. It pulled down a brown cardboard folder from the drawer and placed it on the table. He nodded in response. Your name is, well, was Joseph, surname not important. The administrator read from the file. Born on the North American continent to a happily married couple. Finished primary school, high school, and college without making any aggravating missteps and trained to be an accountant. It paused and gave him a reassuring look of approval. You relocated to a large city on the east coast and saved up enough to buy a two-bedroom apartment a ten-minute walk from your office. Your daily life consisted of waking up, walking to work, doing your tasks with an admirable intelligence, and then walking home, ordering food and tending to your three houseplants. The administrator cocked an eyebrow and closed the file placed it on his left side of the table and procured a new file from the, still open, drawer. He placed a new file on the desk and leaned on it with both forearms, its hands gently cupping each other on the table. Nothing concerning in your life report, so that's good news. Joseph nodded. He felt less lost now that he had a name, one that had a familiar ring to it. Now the end of life report, the administrator smiled again and opened the new file. Oh my, it gasped under its breath. Joseph leaned forward in the chair. It might not be good news, but at least it would be news. It says here, the administrator began after a soft swallow, that you got up one morning and headed off to work. That morning, however, you had forgotten a folder at home, and about halfway through your on-foot commute, you realized this and turned around to walk back. This happened just before an individual with a knife stepped out of an alleyway to relieve you from your earthly belongings. Joseph relaxed back in his chair. So, um, I was stabbed to death. But no, your turn around discouraged the individual from pursuing you as a target, and you arrived safely home where you retrieved the folder. This left you with very little time to return to the office, so you took the stairs in a sprint instead of the elevator. On the last flight of stairs, you lost your balance and I tripped and broke my neck. Joseph leaned forward in the chair, trying his best to be a participant in the tale of his demise, instead of an audience. Yes, and no, you tripped, but the doorman had heard you running down the stairs and he caught you mid-fall. You ended your descent with a sore ankle, thanked him, and limp ran to the office where you managed to be behind your desk just in time for shift start. The administrator seemed almost apologetic that Joseph had misguessed the event. 
He really can't remember any of this. No, uh, sorry. Joseph tried to crawl into himself in embarrassment. That's okay. The administrator took a breath in and turned the page over in the folder before it continued. That day, the early warning system for the extraterrestrial objects had a malfunction, and a meteor large enough to completely destroy the state you lived in made it past the satellite defense, heading directly to your city. Fortunately, the military were vigilant and managed to break the meteor into several smaller fragments which would do, comparatively, less damage on impact. One of these fragments struck the building you worked in around noon, completely annihilating the floor you worked on. Joseph nodded, silently accepting that his death was a painless and instantaneous when the administrator continued. Fortunately, you were outside the building enjoying a lunch in the sun when this happened. Unfortunately, you did not have the stamina to escape the falling debris and were subsequently trapped under the building as it fell on you. The words had caused a brief and awkward pause in Joseph's nodding, then resumed with a shaken wobble of his head. It took several days for the rescue teams to dig down to where you were trapped under the debris. Time that you passed by rationing your lunch, eating your lunch break paperwork, and drinking firstly your tea and then your bodily fluid expulsions. The administrator wrinkled its nose in a mental image. Imagine that, it muttered before continuing. They managed to get you fixed on a rescue stretcher, not that it was needed. You were exhausted, but otherwise unscathed and proceeded to evacuate you from the collapsed building. Joseph had given up participating at this point and had resigned himself to listen and nodding at the appropriate intervals. As the rescue team carried your stretcher out, one of the EMTs tripped and fell. Your stretcher rolled over in the air and protruding piece of rebar made terminal contact with your esophagus. Joseph sighed with relief. So, uh, it was an accident. Good, he smiled. Well, uh, the administrator wiggled uncomfortably in his chair. There is a slight technicality, which was debated at length on, on our end, it shrugged. An unspoken apology made it through the table. You see, um, the accounting firm that you were employed at was part of a conglomerate that was owned by an investment fund, alongside a large number of other companies. A clause in your employment contract stated that, in the event of your demise, should no relatives be available to raise hereditary claims, your physical remains would fall under the property of the owners of the firm. The administrator's face had a very brief look of pity flash across it. Since your parents had both passed and you had no other relatives, your head was cryogenically preserved and stored in a laboratory in a county that did not have active legislation against preserving the remains of foreign nationals for scientific experimentation. The administrator put the folder down on top of the life report and then folded his hands on the green felt, once again resting his forearms on the table. The debate went on, Happier. It gestured around the empty room with the finger for a couple of centuries, but ultimately a ruling was made by the highest authority, and it was not in your favor. Joseph straightened his back in the chair. Highest authority? he asked. Yes, well, um... The administrator pointed a careful finger towards the ceiling and rolled its eyes upward in time with the minute words, You know, um, the creator, it said as Joseph's gut hit a metaphorical floor. God uh, ruled against me, he asked with a defeated tone. We try not to use religion-specific denominators. The creator prefers to be considered, um, omnifluid. But, uh, God? The question was high-pitched and point of being a whine. Please, Joseph, the creator has been somewhat moody due to recent events. There is no need to irk it further with the risk of preemptive smiting. I am already dead, apparently, yes, but not removed from existence. Joseph deflated in the chair and shrugged. Fine. Good, now, uh, where was I? The administrator leafed through the papers on the folder. Ah, there! It exclaimed happily before continuing. The laboratory eventually managed to figure out how to digitize a mind, and a satellite was built, designed to oversee all financial transactions in the solar system. They just needed a mind that was routined in dealing with numbers. The administrator's voice trailed off as its eyes met his 
and saw the man defeated. I was digitized. It seems so. But the owners of the satellite were thrilled with your performance and expanded your area of operations to oversee all transmissions in the system as well. After a century or so of handling the finances, eventually you maintained all the financial details of the company directly. They even used your body as a logo for the company. They did? Joseph perked up as their faint hope of seeing what would look like him was alive. Yes, look. The administrator turned a page over for Joseph to see. It had a crude outline of a satellite with no other details as a watermark in the very light grey. Top left corner. Joseph heard the entity on the other side of the table sound impressed. They must have been really happy with you. Right. He tried his best not to sound disappointed. The slight raising of an eyebrow across the table told him that he'd failed. The administrator coughed awkwardly and continued. After a couple millennia, financial handling died out in the system. The company disappeared, and eventually all communication in Seoul ceased. It leaped through the pages as it surmised the report for Joseph. During this time, you learned how to access your core programming and taught yourself the language. The administrator paused as it read the final page of the folder to itself. After a couple million years on standby, you, um... Another apologetic shrug at the table and dragged Joseph to the edge of his chair. Initiated a course correction that sent you on a tour of the solar system and ultimately ended your journey with a solar collision. Joseph sighed. In part, he was relieved that the tale had come to an end and in part, he was expecting another twist in the tale. It didn't come. The two sat there in extended silence before Joseph sighed audibly. So, uh... I burnt to death. Yes, the administrator's face sprung into a wide smile. Unfortunately, by the time you died, humanity as a whole had been extinct for a very large number of years. It reached out and grabbed a glass of water from the table that Joseph could have sworn hadn't been there earlier. As a man who is still well versed in financial sector, I am certain you understand an aspect of cost efficiency. Joseph nodded. Well... But seems the creator had to find, spend eternity by my side, somewhat differently than humanity had interpreted. The committee concluded that it was a transnation error due to human error. The conclusion was that it should have read more like 25 million years. It sipped the water again. There was a committee, yes. This did result in the creator shutting down the afterlife once the final soul had been given its due time. And... And then another couple million years passed before you died. How could the afterlife be shut down if I was still technically alive? Ah, yes, well, um, that was a clerical error on our side. The administrator had a genuinely apologetic expression. Since I'm here now, can't you just undo the shutdown? I can't, no. But our creator could, if they didn't have a strict hands-off policy. No interference once life has begun. So, um, no heaven for me. Joseph didn't phrase it as a question. He could reach the conclusion on his own. Um, the administrator lowered its eyes and stared at the felt mat while doodling awkwardly with a finger of the mat. Technically, it raised its views and caught Joseph's eyes. You committed suicide. Oh, Joseph considered the implications. Yeah, the creator is fairly opposed to that specific factor. So another lengthy debate was held and a solution was formulated. Joseph sighed. And... Since the creator is still in the running for winning the wager, you will be spending your penance as a human for hire. We're going to be lending you to other creators to help you solve their issues. Wager? Joseph realized that he'd been reduced to a single word questions. Yes. They create the optimal species, sentient, resilient, intelligent, and resourceful. You're gonna rent me out to other creators, yes. To help them win the bet, yes. Why? You've spent your existence in solitude, by choice. Now you're going to spend your penance interacting with others. What, um, if I say no? Joseph had chosen to isolate in his original life because people were unreliable. Numbers could be trusted. The administrator smiled at him. This is your afterlife, Joe. 
There is no no. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed